Hi, and welcome back to Pixie's Projects, or welcome in if you're new. Today I'm just going to do a demonstration on how I use my Karen Dosh Neo Color 2s to color an entire picture. I've been asked by quite a few people um, just to show how I do it and what I use and how it works out the way it does. So I'm going to go ahead and just get started, and I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, so I'm working in Matchstick Mouse, a Christmas coloring book. I'm working on this page with Matchstick Mouse riding this bird. Um, this is a buddy color I have with Sea Smurf Duart, and it is now April 3rd. And I'm trying to finish. This is my last page. I didn't feel really well yesterday, and I had company on Friday, so I didn't get my last page colored in time. Um, so I'm finishing this up and then I'll get my end of the month pages up. So what I have is my matchstick mouse book. I have some backing paper in here because it's going to get wet. I have a small jar of water. I have a paper towel and a brush pen. And I have my Neo Color 2s. Um, I have my swatch chart so I can pick up my colors. And let's just go ahead and get started here. Um... I'm gonna make sure I stay in frame and I may speed parts of this up if I think that's probably a good idea uh, I might try to add the colors at the bottom of the screen if I can figure out how to do that I don't do really well with a lot of that stuff but I'm gonna go ahead and start with these trees that are along the bottom because they're quickest and small and easy to work with I'm just picking out my colors um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and get some dark in there and the problem is that I have a lot of trouble seeing, so trying to find the colors, you know, next to me is not always the greatest. All right, so I also have my swatch chart. Let me share this. Um, because I had started with the 15 pack, then I bought the 30 pack, then I bought the 84 pack because I'm ridiculous that way. Um, so if it's in the 15 pack, it has a pink square and if it's in a 30 pack it has the blue square and if it is just to this 84 pack then it has no no lines on it so right now we're going to start with 225 moss green and that one has no lines because it's part of this 84 pack so all i'm going to do is get a good amount of color down the middle of these and slightly off to the edges um i don't worry about feathering out like i would do with a pencil yeah, we are on screen. Okay. And these smaller ones, I am not spending too much time on. Excuse me for the sniffles, but, you know, it's April, so it's allergy time for me. And I'm going to do the same thing with this big one. I'm not going to worry about the dividers, um, like right here and here and here. I'm not going to, that's not my concern today. My concern is just to get the color on there. So that was moss green, 225. And then I'm going to go ahead with the light olive green, which is right here, 245, and that comes in the 30 pack. Um, let me try and find that real quick. I did not pull these ahead of time because I wanted to do it exactly like I would do it if I was sitting by myself. And I would not have pulled my colors ahead of time. I don't know what I'm doing until I do it. So... I am adding this into the darker moss green and out to the edges of the trees. And I'm thinking I can try and figure out what color instead of the moss green that you could use if you have the smaller packs. Um, what I can probably do is put on the screen like sets of colors if you have the 30. And you can also do this if you only have the 15. You just have to use less or more of a color or add white to just get it to be less um, pigment. Not less pigmented, but to like see the fade of colors. I'm sorry, I do these videos at like 4 in the morning. So, you know, it's always weird. Um, then we're going to go ahead with... I'm actually going to use the orange, which is 030 because that is in the 15 pack and the 30 pack and this pack to do the bird's legs. And I really don't like coloring birds, so this one's 
interesting. Um, and you'll see, I don't, I don't know how much you can see, but I don't worry too much about getting into the lines, getting to the edges of the lines. I mean, I try, but I'm not going to drive myself nuts. I'm going to use golden yellow, which is only available in the 84 pack for these stars. And again, just getting as much in there as I can. Um, Michaela Colors and Creates had asked me how I used them a while ago. And I said I'd be working on getting a video up. Um, but she said that she always has streaks. And I think part of the problem, or at least from my experience, part of the problem is that you might not be using enough water. Um, because I know in the beginning I was trying, like, you know, if you have Matchstick Mouse, you know this book is, like, the thinnest paper. Um, I did try not to use too much water because I didn't want it to get, you know, overly soaked. Um, also now I'm going to take 015 brown, or 059 brown, sorry, sorry, and do a little bit. In the corners of his beak and the underside of his beak. Because I don't, I don't know from birds, really. But I did want to color this bird sort of like one I had seen a picture of. It's um, all blacks and grays. But, you know, what? I don't, I don't know a lot about birds. And I'm going to use the orange we used for his legs. And add that to the rest of the beak. And what I normally do is just go through and do all of this stuff first. Then go head back in when it's dry. And if it wants me to, I'll add um, a little more color to get some more. Sorry, I'm trying to look for colors and talk at the same time. Um, but sometimes I'll come back in and add some more shadows and stuff. Okay, this is uh, Van Dyke Brown. And this is just... The last few times I've used these in these books, these are the colors I use for Matchstick Mouse. Um, and it doesn't have to be. I change it up a lot. Like when I'm using pencils, it's different. When I use, well, I've only used the markers the one time. Um, but yeah, I change up the colors quite frequently. So we have that. And then we're going to move to the cinnamon, which is 055, if I can find it. That's the thing with having such a big pack. I have trouble finding the, the crayons, which normally isn't a big deal. But with you, I'm trying to get it out and get them done so you can see what's going on. Um, but eventually, these two will blend into each other really nice. And I'm going directly over the Van Dyke Brown. And I just accidentally put some on her thumb and I didn't mean to, but it's okay because we can fix it. Um, then I'm going to take 036 Raw Sienna. If we find it. Uh, yeah, sorry. This part's horrible, really. Um, this is what I'm going to use around her face. But you, you don't need to get an exact amount of, like, color on the paper. Because it's, it's kind of forgiving. If you're careful, you can always come back in and add more. That feels good for me. And then I'm going to get some of this hand. Some of that hand. And I guess they're not hands, but I'm going back to the Van Dyke Brown because I forgot her little ears here. And then for the rest of her stomach, I well, didn't do that part either. I put the pencil or the thing back in the box, of course. Okay, here we go. I'm just going to get this little part of her belly in the darker color. And then we're going to go in with which one? Okay, we'll use ochre because that's in all the sets. So we'll go in with that and finish off her tummy and her face. And then I've changed her hat in every picture to whatever color I feel like doing it. So I usually leave the hat till my very last 
little thing because by then I'll know what I want to do with it. Um, so we'll leave our hat and our scarf go for now. The next color we need is a pink, and we have 081 pink, which is, sorry, I had to change trays. This one is in this pack and uh, the 30 pack, so we'll use this. And just, just to get a little color in there, and we get our little nose and our little tongue. Hmm. And we're going to use 090 purple. Just to add a little bit, this pen, this crayon is so not sharp. Just to get a little color in the in, inside. Okay, so now we're on to our bird. And I'm going to just fly this by the screen really fast so you can laugh at it. But there's my drawing telling you what my bird's supposed to be colored. Um, I don't know what's wrong with me. That's what I did. So, let's see. I don't want to do it black, even though the bird I saw was black because black is too dark um, and we've got the black background already so we're gonna go with 007 dark gray there it is and I'm gonna follow my little bird diagram <laughs> I'm ridiculous sometimes um, I had a reference photo but it's on my phone so I'm being like freakishly weird about it because I didn't feel like transferring it to my tablet um yeah what else okay these parts yeah I didn't feel like transferring it my tablet and then having my tablet out so I was just like yeah write down the, like, make a little picture it'll be fine it's not fine it's never fine every time I get these brilliant ideas they're not brilliant um but we'll make it do so the bird was like black and gray through the back and through the wings I thought he looked really cool, but then his, like, stomach, his tummy, his face, all that part was, like, a light beige, which I also thought was really cool um, for a bird. I don't like birds, but, you know, I could appreciate when they're pretty. And this guy was pretty cool looking. I just didn't know what color to do this particular bird. Are we still in frame? So I'm going to come up here. Sorry, I'm like hanging out on the page, but I got to get around it. I want to make sure we have a good bit of color here. And I'm just doing each of the wing tips because his tips were darker. And I'm going to add a little around these edges here. Not a lot. Then I'm going to go with a lighter brown, or a lighter gray. Um, I actually have one called Light Gray. It's 003. And that is also in the 30 pack. And I'm going to bring that down through here. And all through here. I'm going to leave the center of his wings for now. Go over here as well. And I'm kind of rushing through this. So, I mean, normally I'd color all of this a little bit slower. I'd just take more time to get the color laid down. But I'm just trying to show you really quickly what it looks like. So, I don't know necessarily if people are needing the lay down part of it or how I do the water part of it. So, I'm just going to show all of it. And I'm just bringing a little more of this gray around the uh, face area, like that, and down into these. And then we'll do a little more here. And I'm not going to color the bottom of his tail, because I think I'm going to pull down whatever whatever's there is there, because it will be kind of white. So then we need the tans and the beige um and honestly I'm gonna go with the ochre again because that was a fine color and I think I'm gonna try a 41 apricot wherever that may be that's up here 
And I'm going to try 42 Flesh. Um, those two are only in this pack. But we're going to try and use a little bit of each of these. And again, in the darker spots, we're just going to add the ochre. I don't want too much of it because it's a little too, too dark for what we're doing. But I want to get a little bit of darkness. And I'm just going to extend that out that way around his chin. I don't, I don't know. Do birds have chins? I'm making up words for bird's anatomy now because I don't know anything. Um, and I'm just going to take the apricot and smudge that around and just basically follow the line I laid with the uh, ochre and fill it in. And over here we're going to get basically right up to his beak. And I'm just going to put the flesh in through here. And through his little belly. Alright, so there's that. Now we're down to the black inside of her mouth, which I think I'm honestly going to do with like a marker at the end. Um, and we've got her scarf and her hat. So our bird is like grayish and beige. And we have green trees and yellow stars. And she's brown and pink. And then we can do whatever we want. So I think... Hmm, I think she wants to wear maybe blue. Yeah, I think we'll go blue. Sorry, this is like the hard part. I have to think now and I wasn't, I guess, prepared for that. So we're going to get, let's see what we got in blues in regular kits. Okay, we're going to do Ultramarine number 140 because that is in the 15 and the 30. Let's see if I can find ultramarine. Okay. And we're going to use 161, which is light blue. And that is in the 30 pack as well. I'm trying to make this, you know, so anybody can color along. And right now I'm doing every other puff ball with the blues. Now we'll just do the whole thing blue. All right. Sorry about that. I'm very indecisive. That's why it usually takes me a pretty long time to color anything. So I'm just outlining each individual section with a darker color. And I'm going to come up here and get a little puff ball. I don't know what color I want to do the hat part. Um, but now we're throwing in the darker or the lighter blue inside the middle. There's not much of a difference. But like I said, I'm trying to use... Something that everybody might have. So there's that. And the puff ball. And then it's the hat. Now I don't treat my paper beforehand like gesso or anything. And I could. It would just eat into the crayons because it's a very rough texture. Um, hmm. I don't know about this hat. I kind of want to. Do I want to go darker? I don't know. Yeah, let's go a little bit darker. If we go Prussian blue, that is also in the 30 pack. That's a little bit darker. Right? Is that? Yeah, that's in the 30 pack. Okay. So we'll put that in the darkest areas. Um, so yeah, you could prime your paper. Like I said, I generally try not to because it is really rough texture and it does eat into the crayons and I mean I don't know that I'll ever use these guys up but I don't want to find out that way um and then our second color was ultramarine when we were doing the pom-pom so let's take that up and do ultramarine and you can see this is really sloppy but it'll start to look less sloppy when we get to it when we start putting the water down. Um, and then we're going to take the light blue. And here I'm going to stop the light blue. Like that. Just leave a little spot. <coughs> Pardon me. And now we're ready to get to the water part. Yeah, I don't see anything else that needs to be colored. Um, I don't know technical things. 
you know, I just do what I do. This is just a regular water brush. Any brand you have is fine. I have no water in it um, because I like to dip. It just feels more comfortable for me. So I've got a full load of water on my brush. I usually test it on my hand to make sure it's not, you know, saturated because that's not going to work either. And I start with the light edges of each object. And I color inwards to the darker section. And then I just kind of go crazy in the dark section. And I wipe off my brush again, get a little more water, and then fan out some of the dark. I'm just coming in and getting these tips again because they did not look like how I want them to look. They looked a little sketchy. But you can just pull the color out and move it. And as you can see, it's pretty wet. Um, this is going to get to be one of the crinkly pages. And I'm okay with that. I actually enjoy the sound of the crinkly pages. So, you know, if that's something that bothers you, you could try the gesso and then... I just had a little bit going on to the black. And that's also why I keep a paper towel here because I do use my hands to do things. I don't really worry too much about getting messy. There we go. And we've got a few more trees. And then as they dry, you can look at them and determine whether or not you'd like to get more light spots in them or more dark spots in them. If you want to lighten something up, the white works really well to change the tone of your project. And if you want to darken it up, just get more of the dark green and throw that on top. And I try to work from top, top to bottom, but this time, whatever I did, I started at the bottom. I think I was just obsessed with the trees. Um, that way I don't get my hand in it. But live and learn. Sometimes you mess up. I'll work it out. If I have to turn the book upside down, it's still you'll still be able to see what's going on. Right now I'm just coloring in these little stars. And I'm curious if I can... Yeah, I can transfer the color to these dots. So I'm doing that because I can. And then they kind of match. Because there's still just enough color on the brush. And if you're going to go the way I'm going right now, make sure you lift your whole hand off the paper so as not to touch the trees. Because um, you will pull the color. Alright, so I guess I'm getting more out of this than I expected by getting these dots colored too. But I'm into it. There we go. So now we have stars and trees. Um, what's next here? Let's do the pink spots. So inside her nose, her little tongue, and then her ear. And again, I'm going from the light color, pulling into the dark color, rinsing off my brush, and then just moving the dark color a little bit out, not as far out as we could. Okay. Um, let's do some bird bar bird parts. I didn't add any shade or highlights to these legs. They're just tiny little thin legs. So I'm just getting them colored in and bringing the color all the way to the edge of the white. I really hope Anything I'm doing here is helpful. Um, I kind of learned by trial and error that I needed a good bit of water to move it and not have it look um, sketchy. You know, you couldn't see like line work in it or whatever. But it took me a couple of tries to figure out that it, for me anyway, at least it was a water issue. I did not. I was, like, afraid to put too much water on it because it is trash paper. I mean, it's Amazon print, and I, I have no trouble. I figure out how to work with any paper. I don't care. Um, I just consider it a challenge. But as far as water was concerned, it's a little scary to come at it with a lot of water because you could go through the, the whole paper. 
And I'm trying to be neat here with these little edges, but if I'm not, I'm okay with it too. If it goes over a little bit. I don't know. These pages are cute. And sometimes I think it looks like, um, I mean, it is hand colored, but I guess like just more rustic looking if you go over the edges sometimes. And that one, I want to get a little more water on my brush and come back in because I have a, I don't know if you could see the line, but you just come back in and smooth it back out. There we go. And I am still going from the light on the inside out to the dark. And I also used these with like um, my cutting board, you know, and put them on that way. And I've put them on from the tips of the crayons right to the water brush. But for like big, not big images, this is a tiny image, but like the, the objects in this image are rather straightforward and large. So I will usually just straight color with them like they're Crayolas and then come at them with a the water brush. And I have gone over them with pencil as well as come back in with darker colors and get some shading back into it. If I didn't think it was enough difference in color, I'll come back that way. Um, you know, we have to wait for it to dry to do anything else. And see, I'm trying to get a little more of this out the dark blue, but not have it be a line. There we go. That's getting better. And I just added more water to my brush to pull on this. All right. So now I'm going to do the hat. And this one. I do want to pull the dark into the mid-tone a little bit and come all the way around here. So now I'm just dotting because I don't want to drag the color over too quickly. I want to have a little bit of light on the edge. So there we go. And then we'll move into this part. But yeah, like I said, I hope this is Michaela. I know you asked. I know Ever had talked to me about it. I hope this is helpful in some way. And I'm sure there's, you know, a thousand ways to do this. This is just one of the ways I do it. Like I said, I also do it directly from the crayon to the paintbrush. And I've done it on the cutting board and used it hits the paper directly wet, you know, not dry in any way. Um, but I do like doing this. This seems the quickest to me. And sometimes I'm really lazy, so I like quick. All right, so I just wet my brush again to come back in and just pull the dark into the mid and the mid into the light because I don't like these little lines I have here. I'm going to just turn this paper a little bit so I can drag better. And that'll dry, and then we'll deal with it. All right, we are still in frame. Awesome. Hopefully we didn't come out at all. Now we're going to do the light bits of her skin. Except for that weird thumb I did. I'm going to stick my finger in it to get some of the color off. Because <laughs> I did get up there with a the darker color. Um, the brown, I believe. There we go. And I'm cleaning my brush in between each section because I don't want to blend the colors together into the next bit. And there's her other arm. And we went out into the sky, so we're just wiping that up a little bit. And now we'll do her little face because she's so cute.
I'm sorry, I don't have a lot to talk about today. I was just like, let me get this video going. And now I'm kind of just feeling like coloring. Uh, not working out great for content, I guess. So hopefully the picture stands on its own. Because I feel like I'm just like giving instructions over and over again and not really talking to anybody. I'm going to get our little stomach. There we go. She's adorable. I love her. Um, <clears throat> so now back to the rest of her fur bits. I don't know if that's a weird term, but you know. And again, just using my finger. I just put it in the bowl of water, my finger, after I'm done and then blot it on the paper towel. Because I'm disgusting like that. I just want to finish my page. I don't want to worry about having, you know, schmutz on my hand from painting. Okay, so I'm going to pull some of that up into there because it looks dirty. I don't like it. There we go. And now we're going to get onto this bird. Oh, a little part of her ear. Clean that out. There we go. Um, alright. So first I'm going to do this bird's beak. Because I can. And if I just go like back and forth in just a little motion where the color changes are, you can blur the line out between the two colors without, um, you know, dragging it into the lighter color. So that's what I'm doing now. And now it's bird body time. So I'm starting in the middle where I had the lightest color, the flesh, going into the apricot and then into the ochre. And I think I'm going to try to drag some of the gray over the tops of, um, like, the beiges that I used for her body. So that it kind of looks, well, I'm not going to draw, like, lines and stuff, but so it kind of looks like feathers. And then go back over her eyeballs with a Sharpie just to get the darkness back because I went over it with this light, light color. So there's that. I'm going to do the tail next where I'm just going to pull some of that gray up or down into there. And I'm doing this from the top down, but I'm going to clean my brush in between sections of that so that I'm not pulling the really dark gray down to the bottom. I want it to be, you know, lighter. So hopefully we're just pulling the light gray down into there. And once that's dry, I'll be able to see if there's a line because right now it's just soaking wet. So now we're doing a little bird's body. And I did go dark into light here because I do want to kind of just dot that out and clean my brush and do it again. And then do this side. And this is a little longer than I normally do a video, but I don't I don't want to rush too much. And I'm not sure where I should be cutting it. So if any of you have any suggestions over like what you don't think you need to see, maybe it'll help me. Um, so I'm just doing like around the parts that we colored like lighter. So they're, they blend in some because it is not a blendy color, this gray and this beige. But we can make it as blendy as we can. And cleaning the brush again to just kind of wipe that out. 
And then I'm going to come down here to the light gray and the dark gray. And around again. There we go. See, like, as this is starting to dry, I can see spots that need a little touch up. And that's fine. You know, we're going to do the wings now. And because I'm left-handed, we're going to start on the right. And I'm actually going to start in the dark parts and drag them all over. Because that's what I want to do. Like, I just want them to be a little definition, but I don't care if they're spread out more. Just got to get it to move. There we go. And that one's fighting me. I've noticed that with some of the colors. On, let me know in the comments if that's something that you've seen as well, if you use it directly. Some of the colors don't want to move as well as some of the other ones. They're like not as free. Um, I found that interesting. And I'm sure because they're different colors, the formulas are slightly different or whatever. But yeah, sometimes I can't get them to move the way I would like them to. And I guess it's a matter of me just starting to recognize which ones do that. So that when I go to color something, I can, you know, be aware of that. All right. But you see how I can't really get that to come down the way I did with uh, the other colors. Now I'm just smearing what's left here into the center and we're gonna have to come back and fix it like I said because you can see the gray doesn't want to doesn't want to go and now we're doing this wing and it all depends what it looks like when I'm dry so I can decide if it if I don't like that or if it wants more color or whatever but right now I'm not too fussed about it because we'll know in a little bit um, what it did and I'm going to pause so that we can get it dry I'm not going to heat tool it or anything especially not on camera but um, I'm going to dry it up and once we're dry we can take a peek at it and see if it needs a little help or if we're happy with what we've got so far you know and come back in with more color if we want yeah, for right now, I'm going to give up on these wings because I will pull a hole in this paper trying to move them because I get obsessive about that kind of stuff. So right now, we're still slightly wet, but this is what we've got for our matchstick mouse. I think she looks pretty good. I actually like the weird colored bird. Um, so I'm going to let it dry and I'll be back in a few moments. Okay, and I'm back, and we're dry and extra crinkly, and you can see we've got some bleed through, but it's a single-sided page, so I don't care. If it's something that bothers you, you may have to use more crayon and less water. Um, so now I'm just taking my Rapidograph pen with my India ink in it and coming in and doing her mouth and going back over this eyeball because I did... Drag the tan neo color into it. I don't like that it took away the darkness of her eyes. I'm doing it on both so they're even. Um, yeah, and looking at the picture, I don't feel like it needs too much. Um, I'm going to take the gray. Where is it at? The dark gray. And my water brush. And use the pen, the brush directly to the pencil or crayon. And come in here just around like, oh, that's a lot. Let me get some water in there. It's easily fixable because it's forgiving. And I'm just going to pull up a little bit on these guys because it did... Like I said, it doesn't move sometimes the way I expect. And it's only certain crayons that really seem to give me fits. Um, and the gray is one of them. 
So, let me just get in there and toss a little more color into the spots where I want it to be. And once it's dry, I mean, your paper is starting to thin out because you've used a good bit of water the first time, but you're still not in danger of it, um, you know, ripping through. As long as you don't keep throwing water on water, you're pretty safe. And I know because I've done it where I've gotten a little bit crazy with the water, so... I've torn through a page at least once. I don't like that. Okay. Get a little more water. And give that a little drag. And I'm happier with that. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. We're in camera. Yes. In frame. Just want to give it a little more. But that's pretty much everything that I'm going to do to this page. I really don't feel like I need to come in with pencil and shade. Um, maybe if it was more detailed, I might feel like I want to do a little more shading inside each of the items. But I don't, I don't really feel like it needs it as a really broad, larger type image. Where I think sometimes they look better not being too detailed out. Um, I normally do these books with pencils, but I've done a few this way and I enjoy doing that as well. Get a little water for that guy because he's got too much paint or too much crayon. Um, and I know a lot of people do these with markers too. They're quick no matter... I, well, quick to me. I For me to do a page in less than an hour is some craziness because I don't do that. I am just dotting some more in here to get this gray into the brown area. I would feel better if it was more spread out. That is way too dark. Coming in with lots of water just to drag it. I'm going to do the same up here, just drag some more out. Um, the only other thing I can think that I would show you is if I finish this part really quick, I can show you where I was saying that the white would like lessen some of the colors, like uh, dull them. Um, oh, sorry, that was a lot of movement. So I'm taking the white right onto my brush and I'm bringing it into her belly. Is I can pull the color and like kind of leach it out of the center. I have a little white niblet from the crayon there. I want to add a little bit of white up here. And once it's dry, it does just dull out a little of the color. Put some under this cheek too. But it doesn't have to be a lot. You don't have to work really hard. It just moves more color around. So that's where we're going to stop on this. Um, I hope you found it useful. And until next time, have a colorful day. I'll see you. Bye.